This is problem number 8 from section 5.6. It wants us to find the area of the region enclosed by the curves y equals cosine pi x over 2 and y equals 2 minus 2x squared. So uh, what you want to do here is you need to figure out your, your boundaries. So you need to figure out your x values that you want to integrate over. We know we're going to integrate uh, using, to find the area we're going to integrate using uh, this, uh, this formula right here, where we take one function minus the other function, but we need to figure out the a and b values. Well, how can we figure out the a and b values that we want to, uh, that we want to integrate over? Well, what we're going to do is we typically would set this equation equal to this equation. It says y equals y equals. We can set them equal to, equal to each other and solve to find their intersections. When you put those together, you get cosine of pi x over 2 equal to 2 minus 2x two squared. Now, I haven't found a way to solve this algebraically, uh, this equation where they, when you set them equal to each other. I haven't figured out a way to solve them algebraically. But I figured out two methods. I'm going to show you the two methods uh, to figure out their solutions, essentially. One method would be like a guess and check method. Um, if I plug in a one, so I just, I just assumed, I know the range of cosine. The range of cosine goes from negative one, uh, and we're gonna call this f of x to one. So the range of this function is from negative one to one. I know the domain is all reals. So because I know the range of this function is negative 1 to 1, I know its solutions have to lie between negative 1 and 1. So with this function here, we know that its, its, uh, its domain can be all reals, its range is going to be restricted, but we know that because of this function being from negative one to one, really I kind of thought in my head and I'm like, why don't we just check negative one and one to see if those are solutions. So let's just go if, what if x equals one? Well, if x equals one, when you plug that in, you end up with cosine of pi over two equal two minus two one squared. Well, we know cosine of pi over 2 is 0. And we know 2 minus 2, uh, 1 squared. So 1 squared is 1. Uh, 2 times 1 is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. So they end up equaling each other here. So we know x equal 1 is one of the solutions. Now, how many solutions are there, there going to be between these? Uh, there's only going to be two spots that they actually intersect because this is a parabola. This is a cosine function. We know the cosine function oscillates up and down like so. And actually, let's go ahead and graph what we know the cosine function to look like. So we know at um, we know the cosine function at zero, x equals zero is going to be one. So the cosine function looks like this as it wraps along the x-axis and vice versa this direction. We know this parabola starts at 2 and then it's a downward facing parabola so we know this parabola is going to uh, start at 2 so it starts up here that's 1 we'll call this 1 this is 2 so we know this parabola is starting up here and then it's coming down this direction. Well we know at this point they both cross at x equal 1. They both hit 0 at x equal 1. So this parabola up here looks like this. Sorry, and I'm having trouble marking the x or the y as 1. But this is, this point right here is 1. That point up here is 2. And then let's check x equal negative 1. Well, what happens if x is equal to negative 1? We get cosine of, in this case, we'd get negative pi over 2, and we'd get equals 
2 minus 2, negative 1 squared. This is going to give you 1 again. This will end up giving me 2 minus 2, so that's 0. And cosine of negative pi over 2, well, that's still 0. So we know negative 1 is also a solution. So this is negative 1 here. We end up with this. So we're looking for the solutions that are in this area between those two functions. And we kind of looked at that uh, graphically because we know obviously when x is 0 for this function we're at 2 and when uh, x is 0 for this function we're at 1 so we know that this is what the two graphs essentially look like. Now I did that just using kind of a guess and check. Um, another way I tried to figure this out is I thought what if what if we put 0 for y and found the roots of that function? So I said, let's find the roots of this function. I subtracted the 2 over, divided by negative 2. That's 1 equals x squared. So obviously, plus and minus 1 is your roots for that function. So we know that the, uh, the parabola was crossing the x-axis at 1 and negative 1. So once I did that right away, I thought, okay, what if I do this with cosine? Now for cosine, uh, you guys may not remember how to solve that, but cosine pi x over 2 equal 0, so that equals 0. So the first thing you do is you think, when does cosine equal 0? Well, cosine equals 0 at pi over 2, so pi over 2. Or uh, you could think negative pi over 2, or you could say probably 3 pi over 2. Any of those would probably work. So I went with pi over 2 and uh, negative pi over 2. And then I said cosine of, well, once you have those, remember you can get rid of the cosine. So you can say pi over 2 x equals pi over 2, or pi over 2 x equals negative pi over 2. Divide the pi over 2 over, and we end up with x equal 1, or x equal negative 1. And of course they share the same roots, so then uh, we have the uh, same spots are crossing on the graph, so that means we have the boundary points. So we know that my interval, I'll write that up here, interval, is going to be from negative 1 to 1. <clears throat> All right, so let's actually do the integration now. All that was just to find those a, b values. Uh, we haven't even done the integration yet. So I'm going to cover some of this up. And let's actually integrate it. So now that we know the interval is negative 1 to 1, we're going to say that the integral from negative 1 to 1, and remember we know which function is the top and bottom. Remember it's f of x minus g of x. The top function is 2 minus 2x squared. The bottom function is the cosine. So we're going to say 2 minus 2x squared minus bottom function, which is cosine of pi over 2x. And then we're going to say dx. So then we know that that's going to equal the integral from negative 1 to 1 of 2 minus the integral from negative 1 to 1 of 2x squared minus the integral from negative 1 to 1 of cosine pi over 2 x and then obviously all each of these have the dx on it so we're just going to put the dx at the end. 
So I'm just splitting the integral up between each of those uh, each of those pieces of the uh, function. So that's going to equal. Now we're going to do a u substitution here. So I'm going to kind of do the antiderivatives for these, and then we'll do the u substitution here in a second. So that'll equal 2x evaluated from negative 1 to 1 minus, uh, this would be 2x cubed over 3, so 2x cubed over 3 evaluated from uh, negative 1 to 1 minus the integral from negative 1 to 1 cosine of pi over 2x dx. Now I'm going to do my u substitution. So u equals pi over 2x du over dx is just pi over 2. We're going to multiply the dx over. So du equals pi over 2 dx. Divide that across, and essentially when you divide this across, you're going to end up with 2 du over pi equals dx. Let's plug that in here. So we know we're going to equal, this would be 2x evaluated from negative 1 to 1 minus 2x cubed over 3 evaluated from negative 1 to 1 minus integral negative 1 to 1 cosine u and then that's times 2 over pi du. So let's bring the 2 over pi out front. minus 2 over pi, and then we're going to say integral negative 1 to 1 cosine u du. All right, we know that the derivative of sine is cosine, so the antiderivative of cosine is sine. So we can actually do this antiderivative. So we're going to end up with Two x evaluated from negative one to one minus two x cubed over three from negative one to one, and then we're going to get here. This is going to be just sine u, so minus two over pi, <clears throat> and this will be sine u. Now I'm just going to plug the u back in right away, so it's sine of pi over 2x and we're evaluating that from negative 1 to 1. So let's go ahead and do the evaluations then. So I end up with uh, 2 <coughs> times 1 minus 2 times negative 1 minus, and I'm going to plug these in here, uh, I'd get 2 times 1 cubed over 3 minus 2 times negative 1 cubed over 3. So you see I'm just working along, uh, doing our subtractions, plugging the ones in and the negative ones in. So then I'm going to get uh, minus 2 over pi. And then when I plug those in, I'm going to get sine of, when I plug the 1 in, I'm probably just going to say sine of pi over 2. And then minus sine of, plug the negative 1 in, negative pi over 2. All right, 
Let's see what we get. We're gonna get two. That's plus two. Let's uh, go through and uh, figure this one out. This will give you one cubed is just one. So you're gonna end up with two thirds here. So I'm gonna say minus two thirds. This will give you negative one. So negative one times the negative two will give you plus another two thirds. Sine of pi over two, we know is one. So we're gonna get minus two over pi times one. And then sine of negative pi over two. Well, negative pi over two would be uh, down below, right? So it's uh, actually negative one. So if this ends up being negative one, that's actually plus one because of the negative there. So that's gonna give you four a minus, that'd be four thirds. And then if that's two, two times the two there, so minus four over pi. Combine all that together. We end up with um, common denominator, we'll do 12 over three, minus four over three, minus four over pi. 12 over three minus four over three gives you the eight over three minus four over pi. And I think at this point we're probably just, we're probably finished, I think we can just, uh, Circle I answer here. I think they want this in uh, terms of pi. And so I think that this would be the area. Remember that's the area for, slide this down a little bit. That's the area for our, uh, in between our two functions there. So we've got this 8 thirds minus 4 over pi being that area there.